Hey guys, welcome to another video. This time it won't be a long video, since I have two new colonies to show. They are new to the end room, so I won't be harassing them too much for now. But I will definitely make some updates in the future. I had to drive two hours for each colony. The Campanadas came from Henry and the Dracula Hands came from Ercon. Receiving them by mail was an option, but I'd rather not take that risk with these temperatures. Not even with a heat pack. Let me show you the Campanadas first. Campanadas Pseudoridans. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'm hoping it looks somewhat close. The colony has around 15 to 20 workers and their brood production is really nice. They stack the entire brood pile together and the colony is covering it pretty good, so it's hard to document it properly. But as you can see a worker is relocating some younger brood, so I'm happy to see that. I have high hopes for this colony. The queen has beautiful colorations and the workers are looking really fine as well. They get really swollen and colorful after feeding. You can clearly see that the worker has been feeding on some green beetle jelly. And this worker is completely white. It is going to look amazing when I give these guys some food coloration when they get bigger. Filming them is a little bit tricky since I am filming through two layers of acrylic. The acrylic from the outworld and the test tube which is pretty dirty and scratchy as well. And them being packed together didn't help as well. So I will do my best to lure them out with some sugars and protein. I gave the ants a beetle jelly and a piece of dubia roach. And let's be honest, that dubia looks pretty tasty. The ants got close, but didn't seem to be interested at first. I also gave them a piece of worm to find out which of the two they prefer. But instead the ants went for the sugars I gave them. And more and more ants started to join. This gave me the opportunity to shoot a time lapse. I love to see the workers get bigger and bigger before heading back to the colony to provide for them. And I was lucky enough to capture another one from above. In this angle you can clearly see the physogastrism and how big she eventually gets. The ants really seem to enjoy. Let's move on to my second colony. These ants are a lot harder to film since they are always on the move when they are in the outworld. And when they are not moving they are safe and sound in the nest. Setting up my camera with a tripod wouldn't work very well. So I had to film a lot with my hands. These ants are called Stigmatoma reclinatum and are also known as Dracula or Vampire ants. They have very creepy mandibles and I have been told that they have a very painful sting, but I am not eager to find that out. Can you tell I located the zoom button? I'll be using this a lot more from now on. These ants are called Dracula ants for a reason. The worker ants feed on the blood of the larvae which means they make a cut in their own larvae without harming them and consuming the blood that leaks from them. The workers feed the larvae with dead insects and the larvae provides the workers with blood. It doesn't affect the larvae too much since it will keep on growing and eventually will grow into a worker. Like I said, I won't be harassing them too much since I just received the colony but I'm really hoping to document it when the colony is a lot bigger and more settled in. Near the entrance of the nest there is always a worker on guard. This is the only worker that doesn't walk around a lot. Which is fine by me, it makes it a lot easier to document and film. In this way I can use my zoom button again. And let's be honest, they are looking pretty cool. The rest of the colony is hiding in the nest. Or walking around the formicarium like there is a huge shell going on somewhere. I made one side of the setup moist. And this is the side where the ants have chosen to make their nest. The other side of the setup is completely dry. This is where I offer them food. Like this perfectly out of focus dubia leg. The reason for this is that the leftover food on moist soil is the perfect ingredient for mites. It's unavoidable since the ants can drag the food towards the nest. But hey, every bit helps. 
The setup also contains springtails. These are very very tiny critters which help the cleaning as well. They love to feast on the leftover foods, even if it has gone bad. I'm going to leave the colony alone for now, so they can flourish. The nest is really close to the edge, so I'm hoping that they will nest against the acrylic when their size increases, which gives me the opportunity to document them feeding on their own larvae. If you got this far watching and you enjoyed my content, I would appreciate it a lot if you would comment, like and subscribe. I have 47 colonies in total and I intend to show them all as soon as they are worthy enough to film. I have a lot left to show and I have a lot of great ideas. Plus there are coming some huge do-it-yourself projects. Projects that are actually nice and useful, so make sure to stick around, it will be worth it. My next video will be about my Bessor Barbaris. I know, a common and well known end. But they are getting a really nice setup. One where they can dig and we can spectate. Make sure you don't miss out. I am hoping that you enjoyed and that I will see you in the next video.